Okay, so I don't know about you, but like stay home 2020, the Rona, coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you've been calling it, listen, it has been weird, like surreal, like boop, here we are, like walking to the fridge a hundred times, waving at strangers through our window because we stuck inside. How many of you have been just watching like a ridiculous number of Instagram lives, YouTube lives? I was tired from watching way too many Instagram lives. Not tired of them, cause Switch, we could be going live, okay? But like tired from watching them. Went to 50 services, swiped like a hundred different message quotes, watching the little sermon clips. No one's gonna be able to say that we didn't go to church during Stay Home 2020. Meanwhile, here I am, basically no better than I was like 60 days ago. New pandemic, old me. So here's the principle that I want to share with us. I'm no scholar, but I'm willing to bet that like 90% of the times that God got mad at someone or rebuked someone in the Bible, it was for this one thing or, or could be traced back to something like this one thing. You ready? Your life is not producing any fruit. All right, let's read it. All right, so Jesus and the disciples are leaving this town called Bethany. This is where we're picking it up. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. All right, we're gonna skip a few verses. They left the city and so they're about to come back, all right? So verse 20, in the morning as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. And Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. And Jesus said, have faith in God. Okay, so at first I can see it. Like you're hungry, there's this luscious fig tree, you walk up to it and there's nothing there to eat. I could totally understand why Jesus was upset and cursed the tree. Um, but then it got to this one part, you heard me read it. It said that the tree, let's see, what does it say? Um, 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 because it was not the season for figs, right? It was out of season, the fruit was out of season. The fruit technically should not have been there. And I was like, confused one you're jesus if you were that hungry okay that's so attitudinal towards jesus i can't i can't even finish the sentence but like jesus you could have literally been like i would like a mango boop have a mango i would like an I know, I had did this whole set design thing and then I changed the camera angle so you couldn't even see, but yes. And then to make matters worse, you did this whole thing in front of the disciples who already don't understand half the stuff you'd be trying to teach them. And so I did a ton of research, uh, a ton? Mm, thank you, Google. Here's what I found out that makes the whole story make perfect sense. When a fig tree grows, it produces this like, uh, pre-fig fruit, but basically it creates these pre-fig fruits as kind of an indicator of how much fruit the tree will produce in the future. If you're looking at this and following the metaphor for our lives, you're, you're slowly picking up this idea, right? That this tree had no reason to not have any fruit. It was in full leaf. It, that means it was like, it caught its eye from afar. It looked promising, but the moment he got up to it, it had nothing to offer, no fruit, was produced. Basically, the whole point is that this luscious tree had no excuse for not having any fruit. And I just feel like sometimes that's what our life looks like. We're taking in all this seed, all this word of God, we're taking it all in, but we're not producing anything. And listen, this is not at all a guilt trip about what have you produced during quarantine. Like, no, I think that's between you and God of whether or not this was supposed to be a season of rest for you or a season of productivity, you know. I'm talking about our lives as a whole. If you call yourself a follower of Jesus, if you say you've been going to church for any amount of time, if you've been, you know, you say that you are in relationship with Jesus, you can't be that close to the farmer who is giving out seed in your life be producing nothing or very little even you know it's just convicting and, and I'm saying this like for me I'm not like fussing at you guys but hey if it's hitting you too like we in this together okay <laughs> listen Jesus called us into a personal relationship with him that we know him intimately but that our life still shines him out that it's not private that we put him on display like seriously, how many of you want to be in a relationship with someone who says, I don't want the rest of the world to know that I'm with you? Not okay. 
Hey, I dated a guy like that once. This concept of producing fruit is a metaphor for our lives as followers of Jesus. And it's all over the Bible. Just sowing seeds and reaping harvest, all of that. All right, one more parable to make this super crystal clear. And I have a question for you. There's gonna be four categories. I wanna know which one of the four you might fall into. So Jesus is telling the story to a huge crowd of people. This is the story. Psst, this is a parable, which means it's a metaphor, which means you are probably somewhere in this story. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and birds ate it up. Some fell on the rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell on the thorns, which grew up with it and choked out the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop, a hundred times more than what was sown. Okay, so then Jesus goes off with his disciples and they're like, hey, what was that story about? And Jesus explains this way. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe it for a little while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stand for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. And the seed on the good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. All right, so which are you most like out of those four? The seed that falls on the path that the birds eat that stands for Satan taking it away. The seed that fell on the rocks and, the, and other translations say that the sun scorched it, right? It's the people who have joy but don't necessarily endure in the faith. Are you the seed that fell amongst the thorns? The ones where uh, the word came but like you were nurturing the seed and the thorns and eventually the thorns choked it out? Or are you like the seed that fell on the good soil, right? Where it actually takes root. You sit with it and you let it do its thing. You let God's word do its thing in your life and in your heart and eventually you produce crops a hundredfold. Which one are you? I'm probably not producing crops a hundredfold. Let's just be honest, okay? I got some work to do. So what does a life of fruit look like? It, I think it's really simple and I think the list can be endless. Like it's God's word taking root in your life and you going and living out your purpose, you going and doing the next right thing constantly. For some of us, I think we can start with just the fruits of the spirit. For me personally, I decided after doing all the studying that I was gonna embrace this idea of long suffering, you know, patience. For some of us, it's time for you to start tithing. If you have a job and consider yourself a Christ follower, trust that God can use your seed of tithing, that 10%, that first 10%, um, to do way more than it could ever do in your pocket at Target or Starbucks or whatever. Fruit could also look like obeying your parents when you don't feel like it. It takes some time to grow that fruit, so get started practicing it now. Just obey your parents, even if you don't, it's not about your feelings, it's about honoring God, okay? It could be you getting with your friends and having the faith to trust what God's doing in your life and start a movement. Go do the thing that you've been dreaming of doing in Jesus' name, like, that's fruit. You need an easy place to start producing fruit. Here's what I call the Kanye principle. How much of Kanye can you play without getting copyrighted? Oh. Okay, so the song is called God Is. If you listen to the words, Kanye is just displaying, proclaiming who God is. Just start with words. Just start with getting used to like thinking back on what God has done in your life and how can you say that out loud. Worship Christ with the best of your portion. Stop before we get copyrighted. But the line just says, everything that I have, praise the Lord. Worship Christ with the best of your portion. Once we understand this principle of bearing fruit and giving God our best and putting God on display and giving God our first, like letting it take root and transform us into the people God has called us to be, like, like, we won't be lost. We won't be trying to figure out what am I supposed to do right now? What am I supposed to be doing in the season? Bam, bear fruit, okay? So, is your life producing fruit, right? Are you a hearer of the word, right? You're just watching Instagram live church services or are you a doer? Do you watch it, let it take root and then you go produce fruit? Listen, I love you guys so much. In the comments below, let me know what your favorite fruit is and how you will use it to remind you to produce fruit in your life. 
All right, friends, I'll see you next time. Bye.